Hello, my name is Alex, and today we're going to look at an audio description for a music video. The music video is Slom by Anurago. It's like a K-pop video. And I could explain why it's an interesting video to watch, but actually at the beginning of the video, it does one of those things where it like, shows a montage of like shit that happens, and it basically can, I don't know, sell the video a little bit. So check this out. Sexy, uh, <laughs> intense, you know, erotic, uh, fucked up, <laughs> you know, cool video. So, uh, what you saw here, this is just the YouTube video, but uh, this is an audio description. And so, how audio descriptions work is that they'll have, um, is that they're kind of intended for like people maybe with disabilities who can't actually watch the video but they can hear the video. So this would be like blind people. But actually, you know, it has other, like, other uses as well. Like for example, I think that like a podcast, turning a video into a podcast, this is the sort of thing that an audio description can do. So this is the audio description that I wrote. Go down to slum. A Korean man sits alone, miserably, in his car at night. Memories replay, incessant, in his mind. A day at the office. Intertwined legs in bed. A woman's hand orgasmically slaps and holds against a window. Titles read, Anarago, by Slom. So I'll pause it there. Um, and then what I think we'll do is we'll go through the video um, and go through the description that I wrote and kind of talk over the, uh, you know, the different considerations that I had uh, making this. Um, the first thing I want to say is just like the montage of different scenes. So obviously there's no time to describe that in an audio description. So you have to do is you have to like distill it down to a full, a few like quick sentences. Um, and that's the kind of thing that makes the audio description interesting to write and also I feel like to experience as well. Let's continue. The man walks into the office. He wears a suit, outclassing the office garb of most everyone else. He fills a paper cup with weak office coffee. His crush is nearby, a woman with an attainable type of beauty, she slaps her leg in a fit of laughter. Couple things I want to note here. So the first time I watched this, I didn't. I would say that I didn't get the idea that he's outclassing the rest of the employees. I feel like maybe if I was Korean, <laughs> I would get the. You know, I get it the first time. <clears throat> but the thing is, most people in the office <clears throat> are wearing like tech office uh, clothes. This guy, he's in a suit. I think the thing that threw me off is that he's so, like, down and kind of invisible seeming. But uh, it does seem like he's probably a very powerful person in the company. And that's something that took me a long time to really, like, gather from the video. Um, having I wrote this, like, quite a long time ago. Um, and I've come back to it uh, occasionally. Another thing to notice is that this guy here, I'm not 100% sure, but I think that is the artist. <laughs> like a cameo. Could be wrong. Could be wrong. Impassioned debates over minutia play out in conference rooms. He keeps tabs on his crush. Her team is presenting her a box which surely contains something sweet and edible. That's the other thing I wanted to mention, which is, you, you know, it's a bit of a conceit in an audio description to say, like, um, I, I'm covering part of the, 
There we go. Boom. It's a bit of a conceit to like reveal that she's his crush. And that's the kind of thing in an audio description that you have to like simplify, reduce, because the visual storytelling medium can say a lot without saying something or, or like be very like unclear um, because that's just how the visuals kind of play out. But when you actually put it into words, you're forced to kind of like distill it down. And so I found that it were even though you don't know she's his crush at this point in the story, it works a lot better in the description if it's just kind of given. And I feel like already at this point, it's only been a few, uh, a minute, you can kind of already tell. So like, it doesn't throw it off that much. I think that was an important uh, conceit to put in. He rolls over, shirtless in bed, covered in a sheen of sweat, beside a woman. At the office, there is an interaction. She waves at him. Confused, he waves back. But it was meant for someone else, someone behind him. He plays it off, barely concealing his misery. At an elegant club, he purchases two cocktails, takes an elevator upstairs with an elegant woman. Bodies touch and connect and they stumble drunk to a hotel room. Their legs entwined. A flamboyantly dressed man is nearby, keeping tabs on the love session. Okay, I want to pause there. <laughs> so the reason I knew that the artist had a cameo earlier in the video is because this guy flummoxed me for a while. I was not sure what's going on with this guy. But, you know, as you read it, as you read the description, I feel like you might already be getting the idea about what it's saying. So, like, this is this, this office dude. He definitely did not, like, score a hookup with some girl at the club. Like, if he did, who's this just standing nearby? The way that it's presented, like a music video, like, you would feel like the artist would, like, show up occasionally and you just kind of suspend disbelief. But that's why it's important to, ver like, when I verified, this is not the artist. So this is a character in the story and flamboyantly dressed for, for sure with the poofs. Looks like a... Looks like a pirate a little bit. No offense, sir. <laughs> anyway, um, he's paying for this. <laughs> this office dude, this is what he's... I'll say no more. I think you're getting it. The nausea of two lives. He exchanges pleasantries with his crush in the office elevator. Later, he steps into a hotel elevator with some other woman. He chats with his crush at the coffee machine, and they take it to the coffee machine. She brushes a drop of coffee off his lips. At the club, in a drunken stupor, his hand raises up to his lips. the electronic privacy screen, which is seen at glitzy offices such as these, eliciting a giggle from his crush. At the end of the day, he has a strange expression. Hope. They sit together in a booth at a wine bar. He makes a clever comment. He really looks cute. She smiles a bit shyly. In his car, he screams like a madman, slapping the roof and wheel like a caged animal. They dance together at a hotel bar. That hotel bar. They are all giggles and then she leans in, leans in for a kiss. And his car, it's rocking. It's rocking. Because he's throwing a tantrum. A logo, in the shape of a triplet, shows.
I mean, damn. <laughs> I remember. I remember like it was yesterday. When was this? When was this? When did this come out? October 27th. It was like, yeah, it was like fall. <laughs> I think I saw it soon after it came out. This was in October 27th, 2022. I remember just sitting on the couch, dog at my side, <laughs> watching this video all alone and being like, oh, shh. I think what it's about, okay. So maybe you got it. Um, maybe the description helped. I think what it's about is like a powerful dude at some glitzy, fancy office who is hooking up every night with like very premium escorts, right? And but the everyday girl at the office he can't find a way to connect with her to the point of like having delusions and almost hallucinations about being with this girl. This girl that is so attainable that he should be able to, to meet. It's because he's living these two lives, right? He has this deep guilt and shame about his activities that he does every night. And it's like, it's the everyday existence that he wishes he could have and he can never have because he's living a lie, <laughs> you know? Damn. Damn. And the other thing, the other thing that's interesting is that the video misleads you. You know, when she shows up at his hotel bar, kind of brothel-like place, I don't know, like, I believed it at first. But the last scene is very clear that, like, they, that was just imagination. It was not real. The clue, up, clue off should have been when he, make, he was in the, uh, he was in the, they were in the, the hotel together, just, like, chatting in a booth. And he makes a clever comment impossible <laughs> you know like that's where i should have realized that like this is imaginary but i think at the, by the end you, it's very clear that this this relationship is just a fully imaginary one yeah i mean i don't know much about like korean society but it seems to me that this is not actually a fabrication entirely like there are possibly people live actually living like this and i think that's one of the things that's interesting is that in k-pop you often get this very like superficial uh, view of 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 the world and of society you know um very sanitized and corporate but every once in a while i guess the industry is so big every once in a while you get a a piece like this that just like cuts to the core of things and is really unafraid to like talk openly about the problems in Korean society. At least that's that's what I get from this. Um, maybe you have your own interpretation, which is cool. So that was the audio description, and I paused it several times. I want to show you. Um, I want to show you the audio description, but this time I'm not going to talk over it. And also, I'm not going to show visuals. So, the idea is, like, does the description work without actually looking at the visuals? So, uh, let's, let's try that. A Korean man sits alone, miserably, in his car at night. Memories replay, incessant, in his mind. A day at the office. Intertwined legs in bed. A woman's hand orgasmically slaps and holds against a window. Titles read, Anarago, by, Slom. The man walks into the office. He wears a suit, outclassing the office garb of most everyone else. He fills a paper cup with weak office coffee. His crush is nearby, a woman with an attainable type of beauty, she slaps her leg in a fit of laughter. 
Impassioned debates over minutiae play out in conference rooms. He keeps tabs on his crush. Her team is presenting her a box which surely contains something sweet and edible. He rolls over, shirtless in bed, covered in a sheen of sweat, beside a woman. At the office, there is an interaction. She waves at him, confused, he waves back. But it was meant for someone else, someone behind him. He plays it off, barely concealing his misery. At an elegant club, he purchases two cocktails, takes an elevator upstairs with an elegant woman. Bodies touch and connect and they stumble drunk to a hotel room. Entwine. A flamboyantly dressed man is nearby, keeping tabs on the love session. The nausea of two lives. He exchanges pleasantries with his crush in the office elevator. Later, he steps into a hotel elevator with some other woman. He chats with his crush at the coffee machine, and they take it to the coffee machine. She brushes a drop of coffee off his lips. At the club, in a drunken stupor, his hand raises up to his lips. He flickers the electronic privacy screen, which is seen at glitzy offices such as these, eliciting a giggle from his crush. At the end of the day, he has a strange expression. Hope. They sit together in a booth at a wine bar. He makes a clever comment. He really looks cute. She smiles a bit shyly. In his car, he screams like a madman, slapping the roof and wheel like a caged animal. They dance together at a hotel bar. That hotel bar. They are all giggles and then she leans in, leans in for a kiss. And his car, it's rocking. It's rocking. Because he's throwing a tantrum. A logo, in the shape of a triplet, shows. The moral of the story is, don't lead two lives, people. Just one. One's sufficient. <laughs> Actually, in this case, he is leading one life. He wishes he had two, or he wish he had the other one. You know, the point is, you get one, you can't just live two. I don't know. Is that the point? I hope you enjoyed the... Uh, the walkthrough uh, through the audio description that I made and, and talking through a little bit of the motivation uh, behind it. Um, yeah, and I hope to do some more of these. We'll see how it goes. Uh, thanks a lot for watching. See ya.